You know, it's interesting. The knock on Harbaugh is he's a lot to deal with. And my takeaway is there's not a lot of Tony Dungies out there. <laughs> okay. Most guys, <laughs> yeah. they bring a lot of stuff. You had one of the easiest going, chill, decent coaches ever. Did, did Dungy ever raise his voice ever? Ooh, I mean, listen, he, I mean, if he did, it may have happened one time. I think there was a fight in practice. It was a, you know, early, like 2003, 2004, there was a special teams fight. And I, for the first time, heard Tony raise his voice one decibel, <laughs> one more decibel than normal. And, and you know what? The guys who got in a fight, they were cut off the team. Wow. Um, it doesn't happen often. It, it didn't happen often. Um, you know, Tony sometimes yells at the refs, you know, from time to time. Uh, but how he deals with us, he always dealt with us like men and treated us with tremendous amount of respect. And this is one of the reasons why we love him so much. So I, um, I watched the Dolphins-Cowboys game. And Dak pulls Wilkins into him, and Micah can't get a holding. Micah hit Tua, and in, in real time, it was bang, bang. I don't know what in the world Micah Parsons is supposed to do. Yeah. I don't know how you go full stop at 250 pounds running full speed, full stop. Like, I don't get it. Um, I understand macro level, Dwight, why they're doing it. We've got a bunch of backups planned this weekend. But um, yep. what would you have done to alleviate penalties – and still play with a regulated level of speed and violence. What would you have done as a D lineman? Well, I mean, to be quite honest with you, I think you hit, you know, the nail on the head. It's, it's virtually impossible for a defensive lineman going at the speed and acceleration of, of a Michael Parsons. Those guys are undersized, okay? So when you're an undersized I guess, defensive lineman or linebacker, you're, the way that you win, the way that you beat your offensive tackle guard is with momentum, right? Because you, you're not going to just be able to push a guy. And right. Just, you know, lean on a guy. That's right. Once in a while, you'll be able to do that. But most times you're going full speed around the corner. So as you're going full speed around this corner, you got somebody who's 350 pounds who does not want you to go around the corner. <laughs> you have a quarterback who wants to avoid you and 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 throw you off. You know, look this think about all the times Josh Allen is fighting back there, throwing right. guys off. It's literally impossible for a guy, especially Micah's stature, to come around the corner and then ask him to then slow down and then gently lay this quarterback down. What, what it is, is he's going to play as hard as he can play. And if the ref's going to decide, hey, you know what, I'll call it this time, then that's what's going to happen. You know, it's, it's based on what the refs want to see and how they see it. And that's just what it is. I think it's left up to too much interpretation and, and how – is the glass half full, half empty type of, you know, mindset or vision from the offense, from the, um, from the refs. I think it should be reviewable. I think it's something yeah. that needs to be reviewable and it's, it's too detrimental to the game. It's too big of a penalty. Um, you know, I just think it's just, I understand what they're doing. Like you're saying from a macro standpoint, protect the quarterback. I get it. The money makers, I guess. Right. Yeah. But I'm just saying is other guys have jobs to do and the team has a job to do defense has a job to do and they have to have the ability to do so and play the game as it was meant to be played hard and reckless. So I'm watching Flacco last night and my, my interpretation is Cleveland's quarterbacks, Baker and Deshaun had enormous pressure and Flacco's got none and he's laughing and he's smiling. And I think people feed off it. And, I, you know, years ago, somebody talked about Peyton Manning. I remember Bill Polian telling me this story. He said Peyton was intense. He was a teeth clencher. You know, he was, a, he was intense. And he said sometimes we'd say, Peyton, you're, you're making everybody a little anxious. You got to loosen up a little bit. And I think there is value when I watch Flacco in Cleveland is there is a, a temperament. I want my Dwight Freenies to be ticked off and coming off the edge. I like my quarterbacks 
to be a little bit mentors and quarterback heel out there. What do you make of Flacco, this resurgence, this success, the happiness? It just looks like the team feeds off him. I mean, do you have any stories that relate to that, that, that there is a casualness and uh, the team doesn't feel pressured and uptight with Baker and Deshaun? They feel collaborative and fun and competitive with Flacco. Well, I, I think this, you know, for us, all right, the defense, we worried about what we needed to worry about. And the offense, they need, they worried about the things that they need to worry about. All right. So I don't know collectively how much that is a factor from a defensive perspective, other than what happens on the scoreboard and what happens in the game, whether he be cool, calm, collective, or intense, clinching his teeth. But that being said, from an offensive standpoint, I would have to believe that, you know, the more comfortable you are um, with the system in the scheme, you know, the more confident you're going to be. Um, I always said that being a veteran in this league counts double, you know, and I've always said that I wish I knew the stuff I knew when I was 34, when I was 24, you know, because I had all the ability in the world and, and athleticism when I was 24, but didn't know much, right. you know, but when I got 34, it was like, I, I knew everything, but I didn't have the athletic, <laughs> athletic ability to match it the way I wanted to match it up. So at the quarterback position, you know, you have a chance to sit there, analyze, no read coverages and have confidence about what you're doing. And so that experience that you're seeing, that's, I think that's what you're really seeing is experience. And that, you know, the more experience that you have brings calmness and that calmness you'll see, he'll make the right throw when he's time to make that right throw. He knows when to gamble. He can see what's happening before it happens. And the only reason why you can do that is because you played as long as Joe has. Yeah. Dwight, you're, you're um, a Hall of Fame finalist. Take me to the – your life right now is great. That jacket, that moment, uh, what does it mean for somebody that played at a high level? How does it – How do, is it the icing on the cake or is it the cake? It's definitely the icing on the cake. Um, and, and the, you know, for me, you know, I love to live that life of, you know – Hey, you only worry about things that you can control. Right. You know, and I, I've done, a, I think, a pretty decent job at that. But the Hall of Fame is a little different <laughs> because you can't you can't control it. And it matters. And even even though you want to tell yourself, ah, you know what, if I never get the call, it's OK. I played this many years. I had a great career. But it does matter. Yeah, because it's it's the top of the top. And, you know, if you are at this level, especially a fit uh final 15 guy, you know, you have a certain mentality and you want to, you know, achieve the greatest and the best of of it all, you know, and I think the Hall of Fame would be that, you know, I don't have control over it. I've done what I've done and it's up to those who decide um, whether if I've done enough to get into that prestigious club. Um, So hopefully, God willing, this is the year. And, um, you know, if it's not, then, hey, I have to wait another year. And it is what it is. I can't control it. For the record, you got to like Shane Steichen. Because Gardner Minshew may make the playoffs, yeah. and that's nothing against Gardner. But in Indianapolis, I feel like I'm watching the next McVay. Honestly, the next brilliant coach. I honestly think that's what I watch. Your thoughts watching? I think he's done an amazing job. I mean, you go from what they did last year Okay, and you think, all right, this team's going to be a rebuilding team. Don't expect much from them. They have a rookie quarterback uh, coming in. They're going to draft early, and and now you turn on the TV and you're like, wait a minute, they're tied for first. <laughs> How did that happen? You know, and, you know, this wasn't part of the you know the recipe or the plan per se of of, of viewers kind of going in, tuning into the Indianapolis Colts. I think he's done a great job. Um, he's had a whole bunch of injuries, okay? Obviously, the issues with Jonathan Taylor in the beginning of the year, him not playing for a big portion of the year. Um, so the rhythm of him is still coming. It's still not where it was a couple of years ago. You know, you have a starting quarterback of Garner Mitchell, who's a backup, okay? He is a good quarterback, um, but that's not what the plan was. All these RPOs and having Jonathan run downhill and you have Anthony um, Richardson coming off of that, they don't have that. Um, and they're doing a great job 
um, offensively and defensively, the big thing that they're doing is they're getting turnovers. Yeah. And that is what the Indianapolis formula is. And hopefully they can keep that thing going. You know, I love turning on the tube and watching the old squad do what they do. Seven Pro Bowl, Super Bowl champ, Dwight Freeney. Good luck to you. Always good having you on, man. Have a great weekend. Oh, man, thank you for having me. You take care of yourself. Happy New Year. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.